Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, September 26th. Uh, first item on the agenda is for approval, amendment to Arlington Center parking proposal. We have our sister, assistant director of planning and community development here with us, Ms. Wiener. Um, Ms. Stefini, anything you want to say or should Ms. Wiener? Thank you. Laura Wiener, assistant director of planning. I'm here on behalf of the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee. Um, about two years ago, the board approved the park, Arlington Center Parking Management Study, which included um, a number of recommendations, among which was um, the installation of single-space parking meters on Mass Ave, a little bit of Broadway, in the library parking lot, and on Medford Street. And um, the, we've, other things that were approved that have already occurred are the replacement of the multi-space meters in the parking lots, uh, we made some changes in the um, permit parking to make them a little bit more flexible, and we've changed the taxi stands. Um, with the installation of the single space meters, we um, recently walked the street, the length of the, where the meters are going in with the installer, and uh, noticed that one of the streets in the recommendation from the Arlington Center parking plan was Broadway between Franklin and Webster, Although on Mass Ave, it's the, uh, the meters stop at Franklin, and that block between Franklin and Webster is largely residential, and we started to think, rethink whether that was a good idea. And then also at the other end of the um, planned area, between Academy and Jason and Central and Mill Street, there are no meters planned, and we felt like that was an area that was kind of institutional and commercial and, and actually probably was a good place to put meters. So the um, Parking Implementation and Governance Committee voted to request of you, the selectmen, to um, amend the study, the parking plan, um, to inc include the streets going up to Jason and to remove the street, the Broadway going to Webster, just that last block. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns. Second. Seconded by Mr. Curo. Um, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have agenda item two, request for a vote to the board to determine the useful life of equipment and proceed with borrowing of lots of money, Mr. Gilligan. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Chairman. Members of the board, I appreciate your time. Uh, yes, we are borrowing lots of money. Uh, we will be borrowing over $27 million. As I uh, tried to uh, detail in my memorandum to the board, as well as the Excel spreadsheet, which details the current capital projects, uh, the borrowing is uh, made up of the special town meeting votes of last January, which was for modular classrooms at the Stratton and the Thompson School. Um, uh, we issued bans, bond anticipation notes for a portion of that money in order to begin construction immediately and have money in the bank, as it were. Uh, we are now borrowing the remainder of the, converting the note to permanent financing and borrowing the remainder of the money in order to complete payment for the projects. Um, we are also uh, permanently financing uh, notes that were issued a year ago uh, from the 2015 annual town meeting of over $9 million, and that included projects such as community safety and peer school improvements. The current project from the annual 2016 town meeting is over $4.8 million for capital projects uh, that have been approved by the town um, and authorized through appropriation by town meeting. Uh, our expectation is that uh, we will be saving considerable amount of money and borrowing all of this this year, given that we're still at incredibly low rates. The Fed has still, the Federal Open Markets Committee has still not made any adjustments uh, to banking regulations, so things are considerably favorable at the moment. And by issuing the bond anticipation notes uh, eight months ago as well as last year, uh, we also saved considerable amounts of money in borrowing costs. So I'm here this evening to ask for two things. First, to ask the, the vote of the board in consideration of determining the useful life of the capital projects as I detailed in the memo, as well as a vote to proceed with the borrowing, which will most likely uh, occur late to uh, early November. And again, the detailed projects for this year's plans uh, are uh, in your, your hands. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Can I just ask? Uh do you want two separate votes, or? Uh, whichever the board prefers. Attorney Heim, do you? You can, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You can either take one vote with two increments, uh, sort of two pieces, but I, I think probably just take two votes, just to be on the cautious side. I'll leave that to my colleagues. Mr. Greerly, did you have your hand up? 
Yeah, when do you think the Fed meets again, Steve? Do they, 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 they meet quarterly, but, but they, they talk, quote unquote, about changing interest rates and regulations about every six months. Uh, they were um, expected to make a change about a month to a month and a half ago, and they declined to do so. So we're good for at least another six months. Now, the, p please keep in mind that when the Federal Open Markets Committee does make change to the banking regula regulations, and we will see the price of borrowing go up, we will also see the price of interest income go up as well. So the town does benefit when that change does occur because of the way we do our investments in our depositories. Move approval of the first, I guess. Move approval to vote for the um, use of the uh, useful life the of the equipment yeah. yes. um, and capital pro Okay, motion by Mr. Second. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, unanimous vote. Is there a vote to approve Move the borrowing? Approved to borrow. By Mr. Greeley, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. I thank, I thank the board for its time and its vote, although, Madam Chairman, if I may, I anticipated a question from Mr. Greeley. And Waiting. I, <laughs> I thought you'd just put it in there and say, let me have that. So how much money are we saving, Steve, because of our triple A rating? Uh, with this upcoming borrowing of over $27 million on a level debt scenario, it's, it's $5,000 per million per year. But for that particular $4.8 million, um, for, sorry, for the $27 million, we will be saving nearly $150,000. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the board for its time. Okay, this is where I need Charlie Baliosian and his auctioneer skills. We next have consent agenda minutes of the minute, minutes of the meetings, July twenty, July eighteenth, twenty sixteen, August twenty second, twenty sixteen, September twelfth, twenty sixteen, for approval the second annual Cho Core Peace Walk, Saturday, October first, twenty sixteen. For the Dree Kung Meditation Center, reappointment Arlington Cultural Council, Elizabeth Taylor, reappointments Arlington Preservation Fund, Amy Slade, Diane Schaefer, Andrew Fisher, John L. Warden III, reappointment to the Cemetery Commission, Michelle Hassler, request for a special one day beer and wine license, October 1st, 2016, at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Another requ similar request for October 1st, 2016, at the Robbins Whittemore House for a private event. Another similar request for a special one-day beer and wine license, um, October 8, 2016, at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Another request, special one-day all-alcohol license, October 8th, also at the Robbins Whittemore House for a private event. A request for a special one-day beer and wine license, October 9, 2016, at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. A uh, similar request, October 9th, 2016, at Whittemore Robbins House for a private event, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license, October 15, 2016, at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, a request contractor drain layer license, GNR Construction, 253 Center Street, Quincy, Mass., another request contractor drain, drain layers license, Catalano Builders, Inc., 31 Arnold Street, Needham, Mass., Appointments of new election workers, 1 Betty Stone, 99 Hollow, Hollow Street, Democrat, Precinct 7. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda by? Move approval. Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley. Um, first However, we need, Madam Chair, we mm -hmm. need to remove um, the August, uh, no, the uh, September 12th minutes as a separate vote because I wasn't here. I can't vote. How about if I just take, if, if, if my colleagues approve, um, we'll just do each one individually um, and then Whoever wants to abstain because they weren't here, which includes me. Each of the minutes separately. So we'll do, is that okay? So whoever makes. I move approval of everything but the minutes. Okay. So Second. Second. Bye. Uh, Mr. Byrne, anyone here to speak to any of those items? Any, I have Mr. One Carroll? Comment. Mm -hmm. I, I just note, want to note that on the second <coughs> contract, a drain layer license, um, there was a notation there that the references were never received on the contract at drain layer. So. If it's amenable, I'd like to uh, request that, that in approving that, one of our conditions be that it's subject to uh, receipt of a reference that says back our engineering department. Was that um, 15 was Catalano, or 16? Catalano Builders. Okay. It was number Could I ask um, our 16. Acting Town Manager, Mr. Feeney, on agenda item 16 under the consent <coughs> agenda, just to follow up with Mrs. Kropelka about the references that are indicated we haven't received yet. So it will be subject, approval subject to that. Yep. Clarification. Um, any further questions? Anyone here from the audience? If not, all those in favor of approval, items four 
through 17 with the amendment on item 16 say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed unanimous vote I now, move approval of the minutes of July 18th moved by Mr. Dunn seconded Second. by Mr. Greeley any discussion if not all those in favor say aye. aye 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 all those opposed any abstentions unanimous vote I move approval of the minutes of August 22nd is there a second second by Mr. Kiro any discussion if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed all those abstentions abstain abstain by Mr. Byrne I move approval of September 12th minutes of September 12th second any Questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Aye. That's a 302 vote with Mr. Greeley and Mrs. Mahan voting to abstain. Madam Chair? Yes. I just, it is an auspicious occasion this evening <laughs> that we have with us our new assistant town manager, also currently director of recreation, formerly with the health department. Mr. Feeney, welcome and best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Where is that bum <laughs> chapter lane? Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> and Sandy is with him, I assume, is that? Right by his side. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I actually, actually was going to save that for his maiden voyage on agenda item 19, oh, which sorry. he was going to say. So me. I only say that because I don't want anyone to think that I me, wasn't doing That's okay. wasn't doing that. I meant to do it right up front, but I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. should leave that to the chair. Of course. Um, citizens Open Forum, has anyone signed up for that? Then I will read the preamble first. Um, citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Hi, good evening. If we can just get your name and address for the record. Yes, how do you do? My name is Brucey Moulton. I live at 164 Situate Street. I am a volunteer with Sustainable Arlington, and I am here tonight to represent Sustainable Arlington uh, Vision 2020 Climate Committee, and also Arlington Chapter of Mothers Out Front. We are working together on the Arlington Gas Leaks tagging campaign mm. because it has come to our attention that gas leaks are an even bigger problem than we thought. Many of us have had to deal with gas leaks in our immediate neighborhood. I know I had one that was dug up repeatedly near the Brackett School a few years ago. I finally co contacted you, Mrs. Mahan, around that. Um, after the, the old pipes had been repaired repeatedly, they finally said, okay, these pipes are so old, maybe we better just replace them. Uh, Arlington has 177 natural gas leaks uh, the oldest of which was identified 20 years ago and still hasn't been fixed. There are 20,000 gas leaks statewide. This is a big problem um, because of health impacts. For example, if you have asthma, uh, tr impacts on the climate, natural gas leaking is 95% methane. That's the second most powerful greenhouse gas. And the amount of gas that is leaking in Arlington and statewide every year costs consumers $90 million. We pay for that wasted gas. And I want to say that the gas costs us in terms of tree damage to private and public trees and, so, and, and in a variety of other ways, having our trees, et cetera, having our streets dug up, et cetera. Um, we are holding this Arlington Gas Leaks tagging campaign this weekend, Saturday, October 1st, and Sunday, October 2nd. We are having a kickoff event on Town Hall front steps. Town Manager Adam Chapdelaine has very kindly agreed to be one of our speakers. We will also have Audrey Schulman, president and co-founder of Heat Ma, which is the organization that has mapped gas leaks in over 200 Massachusetts communities. Their work is why we can hold this campaign. Uh, we will be placing temporary tags and flags at the gas leaks throughout town. And door hangers, a little more information on homes and businesses nearby. Um, thanks to, not only to Adam Chapdelaine's support, but also his uh, graciously offering us the services of Adam Karowski, the town's GIS specialist, we were able to use, map all of the leaks onto the t school district's map. 
for Arlington. And it shows that these leaks are really all over town. And um, we would like to also invite you to go to the Sustainable Arlington website, sustainablearlington.org, and to mothersoutfront.org for substantial additional information on the gas leaks issue as it affects us locally and beyond. You can also sign up to volunteer. There is a link on Sustainable Arlington's homepage to, to the sign up link. Uh, I believe you may have gotten some advance information. I spoke to Mrs. Kripelka this afternoon. Uh, I'm certainly willing to ask, uh, happy to answer any questions that I can. Otherwise, I thank you very much for um, listening to, to this concern. Gas infrastructure is certainly a very important part of um, town resources and it's something that we need to all be working on together. Thank you. The forum, did you say Saturday at Town Hall, what time? Yes, 10 a.m. front, right out front on the Town Hall steps, yep. And um, with a few speakers, it'll be brief, and some live music, and then we're gonna fan out across town to tag those leaks. It'll be temporary tags, we'll be taking them down in a week or two. Um, any questions? Okay. Thank you so much. You Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll do our best to be there, but I know Mr. Chapdelaine will represent us in the town. Yes. Thanks. Very well. Um, with that, Citizens Open Forum is closed. We now go to. Sorry, do I think another oh, was there someone else here for? I'm sorry for Citizens okay. Open Forum. Else Anybody else here? No. I don't want to. Okay. Um, we're now going to go to agenda item 18 report from our former colleague, who I and others love so dearly, um, Ms. Roque, on the Community Preservation Act, Article 4 and 5. Hello, colleagues. It's nice to see you. Um, I'm here to talk about the two historic preservation projects that we're going to have in front of town meeting at the special town meeting. Um, <clears throat> we're asking for $35,000 for the Jason Russell House and $20,000 for the old Schwab Mill. <coughs> Excuse me. The reason those did not get included in last spring's town meeting is that historic preservation projects, as Mr. Hyam knows, require a lot more paperwork. And we have to have agreements with these two stellar nonprofits, which we're working on. Um, we also have to, ha have to have a historic preservation restriction which we're also working on. We also have to have an indication that these are um, both places that welcome the pu public, because these this is um, private. You know, our our tax dollars going into a nonprofit place like the Old Schwab Mill and, and Jason Russell House. So all of those items have been checked off. All the agreements are, I'd, I'd say, ninety to ninety. Nine percent completed. We've um, luckily for Doug, we had a of council um, attorney who specializes in this um, from Anderson Krieger in, in Cambridge, a man named Kevin Pott, who has been helping us out, and it's been very helpful. And we had things like the loss of the deed for the Jason Russell house that we had to dig up, and hmm. minor things like that. <laughs> Um, More the, digging. <laughs> the idea is that we will um, go to town meeting, and if town meeting is, says this is a good um, idea to spend $55,000 on these projects, then we'll come back to you to ask for you to execute the um, preservation restrictions and possibly the agreements. So that's why I'm here tonight to ask for your support. Okay, are you asking? support. Do, do, is, is it, it actually favorable action? Move approval action? or favorable action? Okay. Move favorable action. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by. Second. On both articles four and five, Mr. Greeley. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Any? Any? Can yeah. we do it that way? Yeah, yes. I just wanted to interject for a moment that ordinarily it wouldn't go into the selectmen's report. So you're taking a vote of support, but this is uh, largely an independent uh, body. It's our bylaw that makes it uh, required to come before before you before it can go to town meeting. That's why I was wondering if this should be move receipt of the report and then when it comes back. But we can move approval. I, th I think you favorable can action. basically move to support the favorable yeah, action. That's yeah. fine. And then um, any further questions? 
Discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Nope. Aye. aye. All those aye. opposed? Thank you. Clarissa. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you. We now have, as Mr. Grilly pointed out, our acting town manager. Mm. Thank day you. Today, our new assistant town manager, who I know we've all already kind of started to sharpen our teeth on and <laughs> gotten deluge of calls and meetings, and um, we're very excited to have you. Uh, establishment of Arlington Heights beautification gift account, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Chair Mahan. Before the board for approval tonight is a request to authorize the creation of a gift or donation account that will directly support the uh, beautification of the Arlington Heights Commercial District. As the board may recall, the Support Arlington Heights group was uh, here at the last meeting uh, asking for approval for a design of banners. Uh, this type of uh, initiative would be supported uh, through an expenditure of this fund. Uh, so this will just provide a, a mechanism to allow for this group to fundraise in particular, and it will be administered through the planning department. Is there a motion to move approval f to establish the Arlington Heights uh, gift account by so Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Dunn? Second. Questions? Yeah, I just wanted to welcome Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. I'm ha really happy to support this one, it's slam dunk, but welcome. <laughs> Any further questions, comments? You can just say your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Hi, oh. my name is Claudine, Claudine Swartz. That's okay. I'm with the Found Support it. Arlington Heights group. Thank you so much, Jim, for, for filling in for Adam. We appreciate your support. And um, as he stated, this account, we've been working closely with the town um, to assess opportunities for improvement. Uh, we recognize that the town of Arlington often has stretched resources and multiple requests. So we view it as our responsibility as a community to get all hands on deck and use this account as a vehicle to have folks chip in when um, the town is unable to support things within its no normal scope of maintenance. We have already received um, comments from a group of over 100 um, Arlington Heights residents in July 28th that they would be interested in contributing to this to the extent that the improvements were outside of the scope of the business of the town. Um, we were happy that um, Joe was able to participate um, within that event um, as well as Mr. Greeley. So thank you so much. Um, Mr. Burns? Yeah, I do have one question. I, well, thanks for taking the lead on this. I sure. think it's, um, it's really great to you know have this uh, type of neighborhood and even townwide support for the Heights. I, I do have one question, probably for Jim. Um, how is the money going to be spent? Who um, who decides who allocates the funding in to what projects? So the expenditures, Mr. Byrne, would be approved by uh, the director of planning and community development. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, thank you so much. If I could ask one of my colleagues, the uh, proponent of item, um, item 20 is asked that it be tabled. A motion to table so by moved. Mr. Byrne, seconded Second. by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have agenda item 21, ADA parking space proposal. Our assistant acting town manager, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Chair Mahan. Before the board tonight for approval is an updated uh, proposal regarding the ADA parking spaces along the town's commercial corridor. Uh, last week, the manager met, uh, actually attended the Disabilities Commission meeting, uh, and collaboratively they worked to uh, come up with an updated plan that's before you tonight. Uh, in agreement, uh, all of the spaces that were requested uh, are now recommended for approval via a uh, sort of three-tiered priority schedule. Uh, so of the 27 requested spaces, 12 were granted a priority A status, and it was agreed that they would be implemented uh, before November 1, 2016. There were seven priority B spaces to be implemented by March 1, 2017, and there were eight priority C spaces to be implemented by July 1, 2017. It's important to note here that these dates are the last possible date it could happen, but it would be hoped that, uh, if possible, things could be expedited. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any further questions. Thank you. Um, 
maybe a motion just to yeah. get the I'm, I'd like to move approval. Move by I'll Mr. second that. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Is there anyone before we have any more conversation from the board that would like to speak to this matter? Um, so, uh, on Mr. Dunn's, any further questions from my colleagues? If not, on Mr. Dunn's motion, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. My Novus keeps going in and out. Sorry, so I'm trying to go Thank paper you. back and yeah. forth. I really, I know I don't know what I look like what I'm doing, and I probably don't. I apologize. Thank well, you. No You're welcome. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. All your work and continuing. There'll be a lot more, too. Uh, Warren article hearings for review. Article 6, bylaw amendment, vacant storefront maintenance registry. Uh, Attorney Hine. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, so the first article before us is um, a uh, collaborative effort between uh, the town manager's office, the legal department, and the planning department to develop a means of addressing a concern that was first raised to the town from folks in Arlington Heights, but is a concern that I think is, is common throughout town, which is uh, the rate of commercial vacancies and the length of commercial vacancies. Um, there's been a lot of exploration as to what the town can legally and feasibly financially do to help address this situation. Um, there are certain limits that I think that uh, the board can probably, the board probably well appreciates, uh, but one of the tools that's become increasingly common in um, municipalities throughout the Commonwealth and indeed throughout the country has been what's called a vacant property registry has different features in different places. Some places the vacant property registry is oriented more towards residential buildings. Uh, in a community like Arlington, obviously that's not a major concern. But um, a lot of communities with similar features to Arlington, communities as large as San Francisco and um, uh, Everett, Washington, have been uh, working more with uh, commercial properties and industrial properties, essentially uh, creating a ordinance that requires uh, owners to register their uh, property with the town if it's going to become vacant for more than a certain period of time and abide by certain, um, certain co uh, I'll call them code requirements even though we don't have a code, and have them abide by certain maintenance requirements. Um, built into this bylaw are a few features that are maybe a little bit more specific to Arlington and I just received some um, sort of uh, uh, d uh, suggestions from the planning director who unfortunately can't be here tonight that would add one additional feature, uh, including uh, uh, waiving any fees associated with uh, registering uh, for a vacant property register if you agree to, uh, and, and there is available to display public art in your storefront. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we've seen is vacant um, properties in storefronts, which there are concerns about how it affects other people's businesses, how it affects property values, um, whether or not there's, uh, while well, it's not a huge concern in Arlington, whether or not it invites uh, trespass, vandalism, a lot of things that are a little bit more central to other communities' uh, registries than maybe Arlington. So I, I'd be happy to answer any questions about it. Um, it's a fairly uh, well-vetted um, tool that a lot of communities has used and it's been getting used more and more with respect to downtown, uh, downtowns in different you know, cities and towns that are trying to keep uh, more businesses on Main Street. Mr. Dunn? So, um, in general, I, I, I like the direction that this is going in. I think I, I, I was worried at first when we were taught, when I heard the, the first conversations about this that we were going to try to go too far in terms of, um, you know, essentially being onerous on the, on the property owner. This strikes me as a pretty smart balance of being light on it, which I really appreciated. Uh, I think that one of the biggest things we can do is really track the problem. And this, and I think that we, one of the things that I've struggled with since I was elected is trying to get a handle on the vacancy problem and being able to quantify how often it happens and how much it happens. Uh, and uh, you know, I worked with uh, Ted Fields on that a few different times and I never got to an answer that I was happy with. And this, I think, really can help solve that problem. So in, in general, I'm very happy with it. Uh, Doug, one question I had was, did we think about restricting it to either commercial buildings or commercial zones or something like that? So uh, the reason it's been extended to commercial and industrial, I think the easiest thing to excise this would be industrially zoned properties. Yeah. Um, that may be a little over uh, inclusive in what the board would be comfortable with. Uh, but uh, the way I envisioned it was essentially uh, in interest of equity, uh, not having it be uh, 
defined to very, very specific commercial zones because I think that there would be, uh, I don't think it'd be totally fair, but we don't want to uh, create even the suggestion that we're targeting certain business owners over other business owners. When this, Yeah, I was actually thinking about excluding residents, like excluding R1, something like that. So this would not affect R1. Okay, tell me this why. Is, this should affect only commercially zoned. And where does that uh, restriction kick in? Properties. Like, where does that, like, what element of this? So in the definition section. Yep. Properties. Sorry, one more, Mr. Jen. Yep. Hmm. A vacant building. So, yeah, I'm um, sorry, Mr. Jen. If you look uh, under vacant building, you'll see any unoccupied commercial or oh. industrial real property. It was indeed right in front of me. All right, <laughs> all set. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Greeley, can, can you, would you like to first second Mr. Dunn's motion for discussion? Yes, I would. Discussion? Thank you. I'd oh, be Mr. honored to do so. Thank you. Right. Okay, sorry. But a couple of questions. Uh, I have not read this with a fine tooth comb, which surprises you, I know. But first of all, why do we choose October 1st? Uh, I chose it based on, uh, to be frank with you, a survey of, of generally when uh, these fees have kicked in for different communities. Uh, I think that one concern might be um, the sort of ebb and flow of the real estate market, especially sort of following the sort of summer season. Uh, and another might be for us having a better idea of how big the registry is going to be for the sort of prime real estate season um, going into the, uh, the winter and spring. So I think that's... I, the dates are pretty flexible as far as I'm concerned, yeah. but um, I based it largely on, you know, my survey of other registries. The, the reason I ask is that, you know, so we have the special town meeting, then of course it has to go to the, uh, and it needs to be approved. So we have to wait till next October 1st to implement this. Well, that's a good point. Um, Why not do it April 1st? I, I'm just picking a date. I don't do, you know, I think this is great. I think it's awesome. I, I congratulate you and Adam and, and others for working on this to try to do something about this. Uh, but the problem is this now. I'm just, I'm just, why wait a year uh, if, to put teeth into this? I don't, you know. But is it going to be six months before we get approval of this, anyhow? It won't be six months, no, no, Mr. Greer. Is that three months? It, it'll be two, two and a half. probably a shorter time frame because it's a special town meeting season. Yeah. Um, so I'd say around that time frame, yeah. Well, why don't we, um, do we have another meeting before the special? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. For some reason, you do. I've oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, can I just respond to that part of it? Of course, of For course. some reason, I have it in the back of my head because I've had several uh, conversations, as we all have, with the town manager on this particular agenda item. Everybody's concerns, especially this is more not to make money and, and find people, and that's why it has in there. It's overseen by the Board of Selectmen what fee, if any, what it should be. And for some reason, I thought Adam had walked me through, and I may be thinking of something else, well, but sure, I, there I is thought a that reason. he had There's walked me through a timeline. Um, and that's why there was a reason for that particular date. So um, what I would say is maybe um, on Mr. Dunn's motion, seconded by Mr. Greeley, but I haven't heard if there's any other questions, that we take the initial approval and then before next meeting if we hear, because I agree with Mr. Greeley if it can kick in on April 15th, but for some reason the back of my head is tickling me that there was a reason for that date. That, that's fine with me. I just was is asking that okay? why that date. That's fine with me. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. If there's one other thing that I may add, um, the planning director did have a few administrative changes that are um, uh, slightly changing the wording of a few uh, uh, matters, but also uh, wanted to add a subsection that would allow uh, the owner to include advertising materials in the vacant space or displayed in the vacant property street facing windows as approved by, as approved by the planning director. So that was another uh, sort of detail that uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, leave out. Because well, why don't we postpone, would it be advisable to postpone this to the next meeting? Unless my colleagues are okay with approving it without seeing that additional language. What do you, what, what do you want to do, Mr. Dunn, it's your motion? Uh, and Mr. Greeley, who's second? I'm sorry. I'd be inclined to um, approve uh, going forward and, okay. and, and worry about the specific language later, especially because our next meeting is the week of the, the special. So the, yeah, the alternative is kind of a further. But I, I, I have a couple more questions. Okay, if I go may. ahead, Mr. Greeley. Right? Sorry. Yeah. So I'm just kind of so I'm curious how this works. 
only landlords that have vacant storefronts would be assessed this fee or whatever. I know it's not quite a fee, but am no, I no, correct? Th that's correct. So it, it, there is a fee associated with it. The fee has not been determined yet. And one of the reasons why I know that ordinarily the board would like to have a fee set in the bylaw, but the, the part of the reasoning is that the fees for this type of thing range really, really widely from like $15 in Amherst to $500 in some communities. Um, so I think it, it, it bears a little bit of consideration um, and a little bit of flexibility to instead of going back and uh, changing the bylaw itself to have this be vested in the board. Um, but it's not just any vacancy, it's a vacancy over a certain period of time, um, 21 days. Now, there are a lot of vacancies in, in uh, commercial vacancies in Arlington that will end up falling under this um, bylaw. And what it'll basically require them to do is to uh, pay a fee uh, on a certain cycle and uh, you know essentially follow the uh, ordinances here for how that property is supposed to be, be maintained, maintained um, with the dual sort of purposes of giving the town the information it needs to help the business community and uh, potentially help uh, the sort of private part of Arlington, the private part of the business community here, um, chew on that data and see what they can do to help uh, decrease vacancies. Right. So, but the, again, uh, you know, I apologize, I, I, I have read through it, but not, you know, as thoroughly as I'm sure I should have, but it's the responsibility of the town to determine if a storefront is vacant. It is not, wait, it is not, the, re it is not the requirement of the owner to inform us that their building is vacant. Am I correct? Uh, no, sir. It is the requirement of the owner to okay. register. Uh, okay. Otherwise, it would be. I think we'd be concerned that it would be a little bit too onerous. Yeah, for, for the building personnel. inspector or whatever to have to walk around. To, okay. Exactly. So if if a business has a vacancy, it is their responsibility by October first, if it has been vacant for 21 days up to that point in time, to inform us or or, or the building inspector. Where does it, uh, this? Uh, the way the bylaw is written, it vests sort of dual sort of jurisdiction in the building inspector and the planning department to be recipients of this information and to maintain right. this information together. That and way, the, that way the, the departments are resourced together. It's not just one department. So does this board set that fee? Yes, yes. the board sets the fee. All right. Let us say we've set the fee at 100. And we're not, you know, just what are, so uh, a, 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 I'm very aware of a particular vacancy, that, which is why I'm asking this. And, and <coughs> uh, so October 1st, that landlord informs us the store has been vacant for at least 21 days at that point in time, pays the 100. And two weeks later, rents the storefront. Is that money refunded? No. OK. OK. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and as Attorney Heim stated, the fee can be anywhere from 15, I think, up to 500. So, But that's to be determined. Yeah, I'm just today. using that as an example yeah, no, of the fine. question. Ms. Mon, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Greeley and Mr. Heim, uh, there's a misunderstanding I th here I th or that I think I want to clarify, which is the landlord is obligated to file within 21 days, period. Okay. October 1st is just the payment cycle. The okay. filing must be up in 21 days, no matter what time of year it is. Oh, okay. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Okay, any further? Okay, so then it, do, excuse me, it doesn't matter October 1st. In other words, if this goes into effect, they have to, you know. October, okay. October 1st could be your second time around if you have a long vacancy. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair, sorry. Sorry, I took too much time. No, no problem. Mm. Um, anybody else who would like to speak on this? Um, sorry, Mr. Byrne. Yes, um, yeah, I have a couple of questions as well, but I think we covered them uh, mostly. Um, one, I agree with Dan. I think this uh, definitely strikes the right tone. Um, I think that this shows um, this the, the creation of this warrant uh, shows a great deal of response on the town employees' part, and, and I think that um, shouldn't go unnoticed. I think that they saw an issue and addressed it as quickly as possible. And I think that um, really goes to a, uh, you know, a great deal of appreciation should be given to Adam and all the department heads and Doug and, and everyone else um, in doing so. Um, so I, I guess I, the question I have uh, would come down to the enforcement side. Um, so the property owner needs to you know, report that there's a vacancy. Um, is there a reporting mechanism built in if they choose not to report their vacancy? Um, do we just rely on, you know, citizen complaints or 
So we, we, the, the way it works now is that, uh, or the way it has worked in the past, is there is uh, uh, commercial data available. Mm -hmm. It's not always perfect, and it's not always as accessible, nor do we always want to be going back to the well to you know, find um, privately developed commercial data. Um, so we have means of essentially verifying um, vacancies right now. Mm -hmm. um, and to be candid, I think that you know, uh, the town planning department in particular is fairly uh, in touch with what's a vacancy and what's not. So I, I don't foresee the need, um, unlike like a, some, some, some other types of concerns that folks might have, for people to be sort of patrolling, finding active vacancies, or to rely solely on resident uh, complaints. Mm -hmm. I think that we've, we've got a couple different tools uh, to sort of vet whether or not um, uh, a property that we suspect might be vacant is in fact vacant. And then I'd also add that you know, th there's a piece of this that is also providing some sort of cultural impetus for property owners to think thoughtfully about you know, the circumstances under which they're maybe over-scrutinizing, potentially over-scrutinizing uh, potential tenants. So we're, 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 I think, trying to encourage everybody to have a thoughtful uh, process about their vacancies and to make sure the town stays informed and that we're not out of the loop on it. Great. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. I also I think this is on the right right track. Um, I think Dan started honing in on this this issue of the the start date. However, as I'm reading this, um, it looks like the trigger is when the property becomes vacant, and I think that a lot of the concern that's triggering this right now are the properties that already are vacant. So, if there could be some way to tighten up this language to, to make clear that registration should take place after approval of the bylaw, I think it would be helpful. Um, that, that's one. Um, and I'm happy to, to support this tonight. I will be interested in the planning director's language, though, because if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I think I heard some of this discussion on this, um, that there was interest on the part of some other local businesses <coughs> potentially advertising their um, like I, I think that Schwann Mill, if I'm not mistaken, had, had spoken to some some vacant um, property owner, properties about potentially advertising in their window space while while the property remained vacant. And that, that that was kind of the thrust of what the planning director was looking at. So, Mr. Curo, I can say that under Section Five, which is maintenance requirements, the planning director is proposing to put in an additional section that would say as follows: would read as follows. <laughs> The owner may include advertising materials in the vacant space or displayed in the vacant property's street facing windows. Such advertising materials must be approved by the planning director. So that, I think, it doesn't have to be a, um, a, a sort of complicated uh, provision. I think it's just allowing for something that some businesses may take advantage of and also as a means of, you know, um, appropriately uh, making sure that if it's not public art or something else that, that those windows aren't just uh, nothing but a lease sign. Got it. Uh, and uh, the only other note I wanted to make was that the reason why I had submitted uh, a preliminary uh, draft vote and comment is because uh, our next meeting we won't have time to produce the selectman's report. Um, so you know I, I can certainly I think I have a, a solid sort of understanding of the board's um, comments here tonight. With the board's indulgence, I can make uh, these types of changes, including what Mr. Kira is suggesting, which is a good idea, which is a very clear, effective date when this, when this bylaw shall take effect, as maybe the last provision in it, um, so that we can have a draft uh, vote in common and I can make sure that there's no objections to it uh, before uh, the board's um, October 17th meeting. Is that part of your motion on this article? Yep. I'll still second it by Mr. Guerrero. Uh, Mr. Carroll, any further questions? Nope. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? I'm Mr. sorry. Guerrero? I do have one. Mm -hmm. but so section four, annual registration fee. A, on or before October 15th of each calendar year, the town shall send a billing statement to those who have registered they have vacant properties, should that say? Yes, Mr. Greeley. All right. I think, I, think that, I think that it gets to what both you and Mr. Dunn are saying, which is that you can go on the registry at any point in time, but we've set up a somewhat arbitrary uh, mm -hmm. billing date um, as a one way of, of, of addressing uh, 
the sort of logistical challenge of collecting on this. Okay. For, the, for just the fee piece of it, not, not a fine. Should we say anything about, I don't know, uh, I'm worried the property owners are gonna pass this on to other property owners, but I guess we can't have anything to say about that, right? Or a new tenant coming in, they charge them this $100 fee, or whatever the fee turns out to be. All right. We can't really agree. All right, uh, just one more and I promise I'll stop. In here, you know, in terms of maintenance of the property, is there such a thing as doing a, um, that this is for six months, and if the, if the property is still empty after six months, they have to pay another $100 fee or whatever we set up as a fee, or do we want to keep it yearly? Annual. Annual, or by, what I'm saying is, we're trying to motivate them to rent their properties, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow. So, uh, Mr. Greeley, I, 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 think, support it, though. I, I think that you could set up a different schedule, but I think that this will be one of the reasons why we want to have some flexibility in terms of thinking carefully about, you know, what is this fee really, really related to? Um, we can't just charge a fee for the purposes of trying to make yeah, it as fees expensive as be possible. Yeah, related to what it costs us to um, administer, yeah. But at the same time, as, as I've said, there's a really wide range on this, and I don't think that wide range just embodies how many vacancies we're talking about. I think it has something to do with the community that you're talking about and the uh, vacant properties that you're talking about, and as well as how aggressive or unaggressive we're planning to be with certain facets of it. There are a lot of elements that I want to also make sure that people in Arlington know. You know, the fire department, the police department, the uh, inspectional services already do a fantastic job of making sure that um, the uh, that, product, that, that, that properties are generally um, meeting the standards that they're supposed to be under the building code or the fire code. This adds another layer to those things, and I think that uh, the board um, will have an opportunity to revisit that fee. Okay. And, and if I could just add to that, again, my conversations with the town manager was at a future date when we discuss and set um, the board of selectmen what the uh, fee should be, we also can um, sort of adjust that fee in terms of whatever information the town manager, planning department, and the building inspector um, glean out and recommend to us so that if a, and I think it's in the last, it is in the last paragraph of the initial comments above the draft vote where it says very explicitly that we're trying to have a balance here to, um, uh, for, uh, property owners who have vacant buildings but are doing their due diligence and everything that they can possibly do but are still um, remaining offline for a long period of time. So I think from um, our conversations with the town manager that when we, if town meeting approves this and it goes through, when we get to that point, we may want to maybe not just set, but we'll take recommendations from the building inspector, planning department, and town manager. It might not just be a flat fee, it might be, um, it could be adjusted pending certain circumstances. Um, and that's just my memory from conversations. I don't know if that addresses the point, but, um, and I'm not making any suggestions about what that fee structure should be and how we should adjust it. That'll be a future meeting. I hope I haven't confused it. <laughs> um, uh, any further questions, comments on the motion? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dunn. Anyone here uh, who wants to speak to that? Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Dunn. <laughs> Uh, motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, favorable vote. Unanimous vote, excuse me. Article 7, acceptance of legislation, use of parking meeting, meter revenue without appropriation. Attorney Heim. This is a little more simple. Uh, the yeah. long and short of it is, is that uh, we have for a long time enjoyed the ability to uh, pay for the installation and rental or outright purchase of parking meters with the revenues of those parking meters without a separate appropriation from town meeting. Uh, under the Municipal Modernization Act, which has given us many, many wonderful things, or at least many, many wonderful options, uh, for reasons that are not entirely clear to me, they are now saying you must adopt a local option uh, uh, provision in order to continue doing what Arlington has successfully done for a long time. We, our recent uh, acquisition of parking meters was done under the law the way it used to be, so there's no explicit concern about it, although I think this would provide some reassurance for anybody who, you know, 
sees that the law has, has since changed. But uh, in order for us to keep doing this, uh, operating in this manner where we're renting parking meters and paying for them out of the proceeds of that, rather than uh, appropriation from town meeting, we have to adopt this local option. Move favorable action. Moved by Mr. Greerly, second by second. Mr. Kiro. Any questions, discussion? Except one Mr. Burns? small comment. Um, and I, I do believe that it actually provides or codifies um, some flexibility on what the funds can be used for, not only for the parking meters, but also for streetscape improvements in the actual district um, itself that we're creating in the center. So, and I'm sure it can be utilized elsewhere amongst town. So it's all good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Anyone here for Article 7? If not, on a motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Carroll, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, unanimous vote, favorable action. We now come to, I'm not sure if you should take eight and nine together, but I'll start with Article 8, acceptance of legislation, local speed limits, and Article 9, similar acceptance of legislation, local speed sp safety zones, Mr. High. Madam Chairman, if I may take them both together, they are in fact sort of companion pieces. As this board well knows, there's an extremely onerous process for uh, changing speed limits that essentially is limited to a sort of road by road analysis and traffic studies that essentially uh, makes it very, very difficult for us to um, e even for us to do it in an efficient and effective manner. Uh, we've received a lot of concerns over the years about <coughs> speed limits in on specific streets and in specific places. This would essentially adopting this uh, local option would allow but not require. Uh, the town to lower the speed limit uh, almost everywhere, uh, anywhere but state highways in places that aren't considered dense areas, which I'm not sure any part of Huntington wouldn't be considered Who dense. Who beats that, yeah. Essentially allow us to lower the speed limit to 25 miles an hour, and then also allow us to designate what's so-called safety zones, where the default speed, where the speed limit would be 20 miles, miles per hour, uh, as long as it's within the interest of public safety. By adopting this local option, we are not lowering the speed limit. We are merely giving the Board of the Selectmen the ability to do it without the uh, state's traffic study requirements. And uh, my understanding is that the town manager would respectfully recommend that if positive action is taken on this, that the matter would be referred to TAC to see uh, whether or not the speed limit should be uh, reduced, including the creation of any safety zones. Move favorable action. Second. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Dunn. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But don't you agree with having the authority to do, I do. so without going through the process? I will support, yes. It was a, uh, it was a big part of uh, the Vision Zero movement as we tried to, um, oh, uh, right, tried right, to yeah. stop fatalities for bicyclists and other uh, road users. So this was a, uh, legislation was a big push on that front. Thanks. And I, I remember when I first got involved in citizen activism, <coughs> not on the board, didn't even think about it, thought it, I would never do anything <clears throat> like that. I remember when I first had my entree into uh, state politics with Senator Haven, and I said, you know, because different people on Highland Ave, Jason Street, schools, Boys and Girls Club said, why can't we get 20, 25 and enforce it? And I remember going to the then senator, and he's like, oh, I filed that legislation. And I remember asking, what happened to it? Oh, it went to a study committee, and I was so excited about that. <laughs> they were studying, this is probably back in the early 90s, and it wasn't until the second year that I'm like, oh, you're filing that again. That's when I realized what the doom of going to the study committee, and I think the senator filed it maybe four or five more times just for the heck of it. Um, and I kind of gave up on that. But um, thanks to the initiatives that Mr. Byrne and others have cited, uh, I'm glad this has come to fruition. Um, and as Attorney Heim has stated, and referring this to TAC, especially even initially in terms of what the process should be, in terms of, you know, if they're the 100% uh, authority on investigating this, you know, bearing in mind that they kind of TAC has said, uncle, please don't uh, send us too many things. So I also would look to TAC if and when, hopefully when this is approved, the TAC and the town manager's office also to set up if it's 100% TAC responsibility or if it's divvied out different pieces of the pie. Is that sort of a correct assumption, Attorney? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I should make it clear that, that there's no requirement that we refer this to TAC. If the board would like to message that to town meeting, that um, if adopted, we certainly plan to study it further, including uh, referring at least some or all of it to the Transportation Advisory Committee, I'd be happy to make sure that that is in the board's comment. 
Yeah, if you can just touch base with Adam, just because we've had that, those conversations and that's just what I was gleaning from it. Circumstances have, may have changed, but I think. Um, so um, any further discussion questions? Anyone here for, we, we're discussing them together, but just procedurally, if we could take two separate votes. Anyone here for Article 8 and or 9? Okay, if not, a motion on Article 8 by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Article 9, a motion favorable action by... So moved. Mr. Second. Done. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions, comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now come to Article 11. Um, now... On this, Madam Chairman, we don't report on this, do we? I mean, I'm just curious because we've had very lengthy dis discussions on this, and I'm just afraid of the Pandora's box of us commenting on one thing and then other um, uh, proponents may s say, "Well, you did it for that." You know, but I don't want to overextend ourselves. But <coughs> of course, Madam, Madam Chairman, uh, the the reason why uh, Article 11 is before you is, is as the board. Recall, and I'm, I'm so sorry that it took me such a long time to get a memo in front of you. I, I apologize for that. It's been a, um, yeah, we were, do you guys all have a copy? It should be a hard copy of memo on your chairs. Uh, I'll try to uh, summarize it. Um, it is not um, all that much new information from what I have uh, communicated to the ARB pre previously, and I believe the board was uh, provided a copy of my memo to the ARB. Um, the, uh, Short version of this is that, as the board will recall, um, at a certain point in time, the state advised all communities in Massachusetts that we could no longer maintain a moratorium on zoning uh, medical marijuana uh, facilities. Uh, accordingly, in the 2014 town meeting, we uh, approved a zoning bylaw amendment that uh, allowed uh, for medical marijuana treatment centers in B3 and B5 business districts uh, subject to special permanent environmental design review as well as Board of Health permits. Um, throughout that discussion at 2014 town meeting, one of the things that town officials, including myself, uh, relayed to town meeting members uh, was the explicit, uh, very clear uh, message that we had received from the state, which was that absence the creation of our own buffer zone or a more explicit waiver of our buffer zone, the regulations provided for this default buffer zone. 500 feet, um, a, a medical marijuana dispensary couldn't be within 500 feet of a school, a daycare, uh, places where children commonly congregate. Uh, so town meeting uh, passed uh, our zoning bylaw with that assurance, and this reliance was also codified in a number of places, including the DPH's 2013 guidelines. 2014 guidelines, and indeed the 2015 <coughs> guidelines, which made it more explicit than ever that as, and I quote, uh, municipalities may set their own buffer zone, but if they do not, the default buffer zone will be the 500 foot dif distance described in the regulation. Uh, moreover, as recently as August 6, 2016, a decision from the uh, Middlesex Land Court uh, corroborated the sort of analysis that most uh, communities, and myself personally, have conducted, which is essentially to say that unless you're creating local siting requirements that speak specifically to a buffer zone, the mere fact of zoning it would not uh, waive your buffer zone status. Well, uh, uh, during the uh, uh, current application that we have before um, uh, the town of Arlington, the selectmen will remember that uh, the Massachusetts Patient Foundation, I believe they have representatives here tonight, initiated their application in October of 2015. Uh, we held hearings in February and March of 2016. We made certain certifications that were required under that process with respect to the buffer zone and what was in it and what wasn't at that time. Um, and we started to hear a little bit of contradictory advice uh, coming from DPH about some specific issues, the pediatrician's office being the most dynamic one. Uh, the applicants had gotten a written confirmation from DPH that the pediatrician's office was okay. And then an Arlington resident shared with me a written confirmation that it was not. And then I called DPH and they said, no, no, it is okay. And then I uh, eventually talked to DPH one last time and they said, it's not, but it doesn't matter because you don't have a buffer zone in Arlington, or you may not have a buffer zone in Arlington, according to their undated August 2016 guidance. Uh, I believe, I've seen it, Mr. Loretti is here in the audience. Mr. Loretti was one of the first people to raise this issue of this new guidance, which I 
had not seen as this was happening in about August of 2016. And this has really put the ARB, the Board of Health, and the rest of the town in an untenably ambiguous situation because the goalposts, if you will, are all over the place in terms of how we're supposed to be evaluating a pending application, not only before the ARB and not only potentially before the Board of Health, but also pending before the state. So uh, to uh, clarify this ambiguity and to give us some direction, we have a couple different options. We could wait for DPH to make up a better decision in terms of whether or not the buffer zone exists in Arlington as they told us it would and should, um, or uh, we could have some sort of local action. Uh, the uh, proponents of this article, who I believe are here uh, tonight, um, are Arlington residents and representatives of the Patient Foundation who proactively decided that they wanted to file an article uh, creating a buffer zone explicitly, which we are allowed to do, um, and would essentially supplant the maybe we have it, maybe we don't state buffer zone. Uh, they have changed some of the parameters of it. They have uh, made it much more akin to Brookline's um, Brookline specific buffer zone uh, <clears throat> by essentially uh, stating that um, it cannot be within 500 feet of schools. I think they can tell you more about it uh, than I can. Uh, that a daycare may not be co-located in the same building and creating some other parameters as well as um, uh, not using this sort of ambiguous and therefore fraught with uh, differing interpretations uh, facilities where children commonly congregate. Uh, without editorializing myself on the merits of that, I note in my, as I've noted in my memo, um, what it does provide is clarity and a path forward for Arlington, um, though it is a different uh, buffer zone than the state originally uh, said that we would, we would have. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. The reason it's before you is not because- I was because gonna say, I'm yeah. still waiting on my question. Sure. So I'm you sorry, gave Ms. me Wong. the 11 minute roundabout because what I'm concerned about, well, give your answer maybe. Thank, you, thank you for your patience, uh, Madam Chair. I apologize for that. Uh, the reason it's before you is because this process started with the selectmen and the selectmen's non-opposition and a community benefit agreement. The selectmen by no means- As required by state law that we had to do. Yes, exactly. State law does not require us to do this. So continue. you do not have to take a vote tonight on anything. You could decide that, thank you very much, you've heard about this, uh, and this is a matter that has to be decided by the ARB. You could decide that you have some support for uh, changing the buffer zone, uh, for creating a buffer zone, uh, but not this specific buffer zone. You could decide that you don't, uh, I have a, have a support for a specific buffer zone in Arlington at all. So it, it's totally up to you. You don't have to do anything. You can listen and say, thank you. Uh, we don't have any comment on this. Or you could provide comment as occasionally the board has on a zoning article, understanding that it's ultimately ARB's jurisdiction to make a recommendation. Okay, I, I just want to say that, and I had a very brief conversation with Adam on this on the weekend, but it was already on the agenda. I'm, I'm somewhat uncomfortable about this regardless of what our statement is, I see this more, um, and, and the reason I say that is I can see the converse also happening, where it's a board of selectmen thing, and um, sometimes, I'm not saying this is the current situation, but uh, on, on the redevelopment board or other boards in commission, um, sometimes have cite, sort of cited the board for, this is our domain. You know, when they ask us for our opinion on, on uh, joint uh, efforts, like, uh, 40B, MUGAR, things like that, and where we actually do have a seat at the table. Um, but uh, I know I have been in the past individually, not just ARB, but ZBA, when I first was a brand new selectman, was sort of chastised and um, chided that when I did, even though I s sang in a single voice saying I'm just giving my own individual opinion, I'm not here as a member of the board of selectmen or uh, representing the board, you know, then town council told me it doesn't matter, you are. And you have to be very, very careful about, um, you know, conducting yourself that way. So I, I'm just really confused, especially the, the legal side of me that I'm um, uh, having some uh, question with is the fact that, and you and I have had many conversations on this, back and forth on this, Doug, where it seemed like it was clarified and then, uh, you, and you had done a Herculean amount of work on um, this particular agenda item and then we had conversations, you know, right after this. First, we had the indication to um, the uh, 
medical Massachusetts Patient Foundation approval from the state agency, the individual citizen from the state agency, and it seemed like my interpretation and conversations with you and, and then the state agency was, it was both contradictory. They were saying both things. And it seems to stand that way, especially since the, uh, August 2016th, most recent um, memo or however they're characterizing that they came out with, which again is ambiguous and sort of contradicts themselves. So I'm just a little hesitant here because you're asking us to take a position that we could find out down the road um, we really shouldn't be taking a position on or this is the parameters in which we should make that decision because we do have a seat at the table. I'm just curious, I'm just a little uncomfortable with it and I'll see what the rest of my colleagues say that basically you're telling us we have ambiguous information here. You may want to set a zoning. I mean, so what, what Mr. Grilly I know has been very patient with me. So uh, I'm just confused why this is here okay. before us at sure. this time with the ambiguity coming from the state agency. Mr. Greeley? So, I, I, I think Mr. High made it clear he's, he, it's up to us. He's not asking us. He's not saying we have to comment. And certainly, has the zoning board held a hearing on this yet? So the zoning board opened uh, the permit process uh, on, on the application by the Massachusetts Patient Foundation. Right, no, on that, this warrant no. no. Okay. So certainly, we should at the least table this until, because as we know, after hearings, we often change the language and, you know, before, and, and whether or not we do it, don't comment is a separate discussion in my opinion, but certainly it shouldn't come until after the zoning board to, makes a determination on this warrant article. But here's the uh, question I'd like to ask. As currently worded, does it impact the current permit on Water Street? So as currently worded, this proposal would allow the facility that, that the application is currently pending. Now, just to be clear, my interpretation and the other town officials' interpretation was that under the old buffer zone of the state, they were also allowed to open there, although there, was, there are folks that disagree with that. That was my uh, opinion on that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Greeley's motion to table, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. And I just want to well, say. Does, do my colleagues agree? I, mean, I, I, I want to say I, one of my first lessons that I learned was through ZBA. And I had very good intentions. And really, this case I cited before, and I, I learned a valuable lesson for that, that if there's a process in place and it's designated who is in the driver's seat, you know, before you hop in the back seat and say, I'm coming along the ride and I'm going to tell you, use my map quest, they need to have the first pass at it. So um, that really allays a lot of my concerns because that's what I was afraid of going down that road that I never should have as a brand new okay. baby selectman. Mr. Kiro. I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, on principle, I don't like to... to um, tell all the boards how to, you know, con conduct their business unless they ask for an advisory opinion. Um, I think tabling makes sense, but if, if the redevelopment board then takes action on this and does not seek our, our input on it, I'll be inclined n not to take any action whatsoever as far as an advisory opinion of this board. Or, or the ZBA. They're, they're the two. It's redevelopment and ZBA. That well, it's redevelopment is the reporting board for, for the right. warrant. The redevelopment board. Okay, yes. so redevelopment. I'm sorry, I said zoning, but I'm sorry, okay. Okay. Um, any further questions, comments on a motion? Mr. Yes. Byrne, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I do have a, one further comment, and while I understand that this, uh, I, this certainly shouldn't be taken by, I want the ARB to vote in any way, I, I do appreciate the proponents bringing forward uh, an article to uh, move away from the ambiguity that we're currently experiencing. I think that everything that has uh, transpired so far with this application has happened in good faith. And I see this as a um, you know, further commitment to that good faith effort. So thank you. Mr. Carroll? I have one, actually I have two questions just around the legality of the, of the uh, motion. I noticed that the lead petitioner is listed as a Boston address, so I'm assuming that, that the lead petitioner is listed here is actually not a registered Arlington voter? Uh, Mr. Akira, that's correct. The, uh, I think that's, it's just the way that it was packaged, but there, we verified that the 100 signatures are present on the app. Got it. And, and secondly, I just, in anticipation of what we might see, I noticed that the, the article does not have and take any other action um, related, there, related there too. So my assumption is that the, once the redevelopment board acts on this, they're either acting 
in this language or they're acting in a way. You know, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll double check on that. Uh, I, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll verify with the original article that there's no or take any they're actually related to. Sometimes in the form it gets uh, cut off. So we'll, we'll double check on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now move to correspondence received. Request for parking time limit change on Broadway and concern regarding installation of parking meters from Emily Hammond. Reverse signage change on Lake Street, Side Street, Susan Brogan, and request memorial plaque for Howard Sessler, Jack Johnson, Mr. Byrne. Um, for the, one sec, I have some notes here. I'm gonna have to put you down as move receipt. Um, I, I will move receipt, but. Um, Mr. Byrne, and then call on Ms. Sec seconded by. Second. Mr. Greeley, sorry, Mr. Byrne. Um, so, um, it, as for the, First request for parking time limit change. Um, I think that as we heard today, um, there is parking time limit changes going in. So the spaces referenced here are actually going to be moved up to four hours when the new meters are put in. Um, and so I, I'm happy to bring that back to the PIGC to um, give that a, a better answer for uh, Ms. Hammond. But, but I do want to say that I do disagree with her reference that this is not good for businesses in town. I think this is an excellent change for businesses in town. <coughs> it will lead to better turnover in our business district, and I think it will make, um, uh, it will help the vibrancy of our center, which of course tonight we spent a lot of time speaking about. So thank parking you. turnover, not business turnover. Yes, parking turnover, that is correct. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so uh, first we have correspondence received by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Greeley with the action plan that our colleague, Mr. Byrne, will bring this back to the PIGC. I don't know if... Actually, yes, and Mr. perhaps uh, I will tag team with Adam and Mr. Feeney on doing so. Okay. Um, Mr. Feeney, did you have anything on the second agenda item, uh, correspondence received? Or yes, Chair Mahatma. I would just add that, uh, as you know, we have undertaken a six-month uh, pilot program in that area and to certainly... You know, I'd recommend acknowledging receipt of this correspondence, but uh, certainly taken into consideration when gauging the effectiveness and the impact of the signage changes at the conclusion of the uh, six-month pilot program. Um, okay, any, Mr. Dunn? Uh, the last one, mm -hmm. memorial plaque referred to the memorial committee, please. Okay. Public memorial committee. I really enjoyed that letter. I learned things. Mm -hmm. I did not know. I know, I know. It's not, yeah. That's true. And I, I'd also just like to say yes, that um, on a related note that um, you may recall that um, we had appointed uh, Chris Costello to the, the um, Cyrus Dallin Board of Trustees who would, um, as a local designer, would design some of our coins, some of the National Park quarters and, and such. Well, he, he also designed the Congressional Gold Medal for the Doolittle Raiders. And he has purchased one, which he is ready to, to donate to the town for appropriate display as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I don't know that it, it directly relates to, to, to this area. I think it would probably be, have to be in a protected place. But um, um, I just wanted to put, put that out there and, and note that this is a piece of our history that I think we have to, uh, it, it makes sense to memorialize. Yeah. Okay. And did I? On, on the second agenda <coughs> item, Lake Street, um, Mr. Feeney, will you, with the town manager, uh, get back to uh, Ms. Brogan? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> if you think that's appropriate? Okay. So on motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley to refer the first item to PIGC. Second item, Mr. Feeney and Mr. Chapter um will get back to that um, letter writer. And third item, uh, refer to the memorial committee. Any Further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka. Nothing new except for we're uh, we'll getting ready for town meeting and early voting. Okay, busy with that. Hofstra, was that Paul or Stephen? Stephen went to Hofstra, so I'll okay. be watching that tonight. Okay. So I, couldn't, I can see the picture, but I'm like, which, which one of her little kitty cuties is that? Thank you. Um, Attorney Heim? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the only piece of new business I have is to uh, remind everybody that uh, tomorrow night uh, the zoning board is uh, opening the hearing for the comprehensive permit application regarding Thorndike Place from Oak Tree Development, um, otherwise known as the Mugar property. Um, the board will recall that it uh, 
uh, opposed project eligibility in a fairly detailed letter expressing a number of concerns about the information or lack thereof in the uh, eligibility documents that the applicant submitted to us. Um, Tomorrow night, uh, for those Arlingtonians uh, interested in attending, uh, we expect that the ZBA will discuss the 1.5% uh, status and calculation, which um, the town believes that we, uh, we possess. Um, we'll discuss also a, uh, the completeness of the application and the request for waivers. At the Zoning Board of Appeals Chair's request, a uh, completeness review was conducted by Attorney Whitten, who you all remember, who I think expressed a lot of the same concerns that this board uh, articulated, uh, geez, almost a year ago now, or more than, I don't know, I guess a little less than that, in the eligibility um, consideration phase. So there still remain a lot of concerns that I expect the ZBA to begin vetting tomorrow night. Um, oh, I'm sorry, can I say one more thing? Uh, that, that is a uh, long process. There's 180 days to process the application. This board may is again, uh, but, but is not required to uh, take a position on the application as a whole and may uh, be uh, good to, subject, uh, to schedule something on a future agenda if the board is so inclined to discuss its collective position on the uh, 40B application. Thank you. Um, th that would be my inclination to, uh, with the town manager, uh, put this on a future agenda for us to discuss because I know I'm sure all of us have started getting the calls and the emails and all those other things tweets and messages in terms of um, is the board going to reiterate or revise or whatever its position so with my colleagues um, approval I'll have that on a future agenda item anything else I don't have anything else thank you acting town manager Mr. Feeney nothing else look at that Mr. Greeley? I move that you come to every meeting. <laughs> Adam normally has a list of about 10, <laughs> 10 pages long. Mm -hmm. Two quick things, uh, Madam Chair. First of all, uh, Marie, Marianne, Fran, and Ashley are just unbelievable in terms of what they have accomplished this year. Regular town meeting, special town meeting, three additional elections this year, Marie, primaries and the presidential, four additional, four additional elections. And probably one of the most spectacular town day weekends in the 40-year history of this town. Uh, they, it's just exceptional uh, work that they have done and uh, just really, really well done, Maureen and staff. I and mean, thank you so much. And I know there's a committee. I know there's a co-chair. They do 98% of that work. And it's the, the largest town day I think I've ever been at. I, I think I've been to 30 years worth, but maybe, well, I don't know, I'm 65, so I've probably have been to 40 years worth. Yeah, I was going to say, this. Uncle Big Sam's attendance. 1976 statue, the first one. Oh, I was there for that, That yeah, was so. the first one, then my mother-in-law, Ruth, and Dave McKenna. All right, I'm old, I'm dying, I'm tired. <laughs> and, so I just, if, if, with the board's indulgence, uh, I would just like to point out the Rotary Club is uh, um, running a program called Flags for Heroes. And for a $25 uh, donation, uh, it's a 10, uh, it's a 10 foot pole, a three by five flag. And from November 1st to November 12th, they're gonna be on a display on the uh, front lawn of Arlington High School. And it's to remember those that have passed or living uh, heroes if you'd like. And there'll be a plaque on each, each of the flags for who the hero is and who's uh, remembering the hero, and that will be mailed to the donor afterwards. If you want more information, talk to me. I love you. Good night, Arlington. Mr. Byrne. Um, other than a, a spectacular town day, I don't have much to add, so thank you. You're supposed to say I want to buy a flag for you, my hero, Kevin. Mr. Kiro. <laughs> Did you pick that up? Get out of Mr. Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dunn. Uh, two things. Uh, first off, uh, thank you voters for the Minuteman result. Um, as we all know, uh, Minuteman was approved by the 16 towns. Um, Belmont was, uh, you know, eyes were on Belmont and Belmont voted no, 70-30. They are, last I heard, they're going to be angling for a special town meeting the same day as our special town meeting is the date that they've penciled in at least, which is when they will be seeking to leave the Minuteman district, which is going to, and then uh, provided they, it'll be interesting to see if they can get their two-thirds vote. Mm -hmm. And if they do, um, this board will have a future discussion about whether or not we want to support their uh, departure. 
Will this be known as the Bexit vote? Uh, I, <laughs> very good. I, <laughs> are you going? Do you plan on being at the Belmont Town Meeting? No. No, because it's the same night as our yeah. town meeting. Yeah, I know, but oh, yeah. he's been so yeah. involved. I didn't know whether... No, but if, I would say, however, if you or anyone um, you know, knows a Belmont Town Meeting member, we should uh, lobby them some. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, second item. Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to go to the State House uh, with uh, St uh, Selectman Byrne uh, to collect um, the, a plaque for representing the four hundred thousand dollars for the town's Complete Streets Initiative. And so there was a ceremony at the State House. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito and Transportation Secretary Pollock passed out uh, the certificates. Uh, Steve was there. I was there. Uh, Jenny Rate, uh, our Director of Planning, was there. To and uh, Sean Garbley, our representative. And uh, it was um, an interesting ceremony, and I think we should, uh, I mean, I'm proud that we were in front on that, and I'm very proud of the work that the people the town, the town did in making that application and, and making that uh, possible. So it was, a, it was a nice cemetery, and Arlington was one of 12 towns that received grants in this program's uh, inaugural year. I would just add that we are um, not every town received four hundred thousand dollars, which is the most amount of money that you can get under this uh, application, I believe. Wow. So um, I, I think that says a lot to the work that was done in putting that application together. Yes, uh, just two agenda items, and I'll be very brief, hopefully. Uh, first off, uh, we all received a email from somebody uh, who had appeared before us, was on our Novus agenda had recently done a, a Google search and this individual saw their name um, out there uh, expressed in the email to every member of the board. I did respond after I had conversations with Attorney Heim and uh, Adam Chapdelaine and most recently Mrs. Kropelka and Mr. Feeney. Um, I responded to her initially that, you know, this uh, the board has been in contact. I didn't CC everybody because I was afraid any sort of open meeting law, um, but I did indicate that, you know, my colleagues would be made aware I wasn't see seeing all my colleagues for fear of, you know, crossing that open meeting law um, issue. Uh, I know that town council and the selectman's office and the town manager are, basically I saw the request is twofold. She was saying first, get my name out of there so if I do any kind of search, it doesn't appear. That's next to impossible. I mean, I know lots of people, including two former school employees, that <laughs> they would have liked us to do something like that. I don't know that that's something the town of Arlington, the selectman's office, the IT department, I think it's out there, you know, if you Google it. But then she also did provide two or three links, URL links to our Novus agenda, um, saying, can you take me out of the World Wide Web and can you take me off these links here? So on the second request, I know that um, the selectman's office and town manager's office and town council are looking at that. My uh, opinion is you submit something, you know, in the past someone could come in and say, give me a copy of that, they get all that information. I don't know that we can um, necessarily take anything off our domain, which is the Novus Agenda URL links. And I do know that I spoke with Mrs. Kropelka and everybody else in the office that they do tell people, you know, this, once you submit something, this is, um, I, this is a public record, a public document. So I just want to let everybody know um, that this individual knows that we're working on it and between all those other people I cited, uh, they'll have communications with that individual. I'm not saying any names or anything, which I'm sure I could, but I'm trying to. And then the second is uh, uh, concession stand. There's been some issues around that. Uh, first home game, it wasn't open. It may not be open for the next few weeks, but I'm working with the town manager and other appropriate uh, department heads, as well as the athletic director and school superintendent. And hopefully, you know, we'll get that resolved in some way and either it will come back to the board in this forum or it may be something from the town manager and superintendent of schools about how to get that back open and, and, and keep it open. And then lastly, just invite everybody, if you're around, if you want to, this Friday at Arlington High School at 1230, the way the new athletic director does, instead of the pep rally for different sports right before their, their big Thanksgiving Day game or others, the all sports um, pep rally at Arlington High School will be this Friday at 1230. In the red gym, you're welcome to come down. Uh, with that, uh, motion to adjourn by so Mr. Greeley, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. All those in something favor? On Friday, by chance. <laughs> if you do, if you do your tumbling pass, you're there, okay, buddy. Right. All those I in favor, all those in favor, say aye. All those opposed, unanimous aye. vote. We are adjourned. Thank you.